Okay, so let's start those seven tips to overcome whatever life throws at you. That first one, water. Your body needs water. You're 70% water. Your brain, that's 85% water. And in fact, your brain gets priority over the rest of your body. So if you're not drinking enough water that your body actually uses, you're going to start developing all kinds of signs that doctors call conditions and diseases and illness and prescribe drugs. And in fact, they're dehydration. How much water do you need a day? You need to take your body weight, divide it in two. That's how many ounces you need. Let's say a person weighs 150 pounds. You divide that in two, you need 75 ounces. Over the course of the day, you don't go with down all at once. Over the course of the day, that's only if you're not drinking alcohol or caffeine. For every cup of alcohol or caffeine, you need an extra two to three cups to replace the dehydrating effects. And if you know anybody who's still drinking soda, soda is probably the single worst thing you can put in your mouth after weed to replace the oxygen that's used in order for your body to assimilate that one 10 ounce can of soda. You need 32, that's three, two glassfuls of water to make up for it. Oh, and you're not going to be able to swallow that water. Unless it's in a form your body can use. What is a sticky molecule? You need it broken down. You need it to have all the bad stuff removed, but it's got to have minerals in it. Otherwise, your body can't absorb it. In fact, for every quart of water that you're drinking in a day, you want to be sure that you're having a quarter teaspoonful of salt. All kinds of things that look like problems with your heart, muscles, knees, it's all happening because of a salt shortage. Now, number two, meditation. Here's a quick way to start meditating. And if you already meditate, this will help you get to a place that's even deeper. When you do something three times, your body gets a signal that you're getting ready to meditate. Well, not just anything three times, but a pattern that you're setting up. So what you're going to do is you're going to breathe in through your mouth, out through your mouth, in through your mouth, out through your nose, in through your nose, out through your nose, in through your nose, out through your mouth. Now that's one cycle. You do that set three times. You take your time doing it. Do it to a slow count of about five in, five out. Also, if you do it with your eyes open, and again, with your eyes closed, that gets different parts of your brain involved. It will alter the brain waves going on for you, making your meditation much deeper with far more profound results. One thing I do before I meditate is I set an intention. I'll ask a question, what is it I want to get from the meditation? And then it comes to me. I get so many answers when I meditate. Plus, meditation helps your body in countless ways. In fact, if you do transcendental meditation, there are more than 500 studies showing the impact the meditation has on your health and well-being. Number three, take a look at the exercises, and I'll describe them as uh, you see me doing them, and that will get your human growth hormone that's already in your body. You just need to be able to use it. That'll get it going. I also threw in an extra bonus of some exercises. You do these every morning and your brain and your energy will be turned on. You'll have both hemispheres working and the energy will be in alignment for much more accurate activity throughout the day. And of course, bottom line to everything is water, drinking enough water all day long. Okay, so the first thing you're doing is just shaking, bouncing up and down. You keep your feet.
planted on the floor. Now you're pounding an inch below your navel, an inch above, and also your um, your coccyx at the base of your spine. Now an inch above the navel and the coccyx. Now the upper inside the shoulder, there's a tender spot there, and you're just going back and forth, coccyx, and inside the shoulder. Now you're hitting your thymus, so that's your breastbone under the thymus. Thymus is there, just be hitting it. Next, what I'm doing is marching, just up and down, lifting my feet, not like walking. Your whole foot is coming up, your whole foot's going down, not heel toe. And now I'm back to shaking. I'm moving my head, and I'm just going side to side. If you can do it without moving your shoulders too, that's even better. And you'll get there gradually, but start where you are right now with the movement that you can comfortably do. Now just doing some major swinging around, getting everything up and going and moving all through my system. Look okay, up over my head and down, and up and down, and it's an inhale and it's an exhale, and it's an inhale and it's an exhale, and you go as far as you comfortably can. It's okay to bend your knees going down. Do what feels comfortable. Swing in your arms back. So you're getting a wide motion. And next we have up and over. Do it the way your body works. That's how my body works. If you can keep your arms straight, that's great. You want to feel the stretch all that along the side of you. And going back and going forward and going back, almost like uh, you're sitting down in a chair, but the chair is not there. Down and back up and down and back up. Notice I'm not doing a lot of each of these things, just a few. Now, doing a little bit more of that marching in place. If you can do that marching in place for a full 10 minutes, that's great. Now make up any kind of exercise that you have. I like to do Kempo, and the Kempo includes this sort of boxing. Doing it both sides, do what you can. Right now, that's the way my arms can move, and that's okay. You do what you can. Some more marching. And now, little more bouncing, making kind of karate chops before we were swinging gently. I haven't done karate in a long time, so don't write any letters and tell me my form is terrible, because all that matters is how I'm moving right now, and that's all that matters for you. Just basically shaking. Now, now we're going to make sure that the brain's working. We're crossing over the center line. You do not have to touch your knees. Now you're going same side, but don't do that too many times. No, so I only do it three times. And back to crossing. This gets your brain working together. When we did same side, it was making sure each brain can work by itself. And this is just another way to be able to do that crossing over. Now we're making sure that your energy is running right. You're taking two fingers above your lip and your thumb below, and the other hand's rubbing at your navel. Now you're switching hands. You do each way for about 20 seconds. Now you're finding a tender spot where your collarbone meets your breastbone. It probably hurts. One hand on the navel, two fingers and one finger on each side where it's tender, and it's 20 seconds each there. That's getting your energy from left to right. And now, you're getting your front to back energy, one hand on your cossacks, your tailbone, the other 
on your navel and 20 seconds each way there. Now eating milk is eliminating soda, it's eliminating the sugars, but do you know what's even worse for you than two tablespoons of sugar? Two pieces of whole wheat bread. Ain't no such thing as a healthy whole grain. The human body was not designed for whole grains. Take a look at who benefits by your eating grains. Big food. It makes you sick. It destroys your body. It destroys your brain. And there's all kinds of research out there. This isn't anything new. Two books I highly recommend. And you can find both these doctors. Lots of videos. They have their own websites. So you want to be sure that you get these books, both of them. Grain Brain by David Perlmutter and Wheat Belly by William Davis. The program I recommend most highly, in fact, the only program I recommend, it gets a complete picture of health. And ostensibly, it's about losing weight. So you stop eating your grains, you're going to lose that visceral fat. So here's the thing. Visceral fat, it's not fat, it's an actual organ. And it's killing you. Enough said, read those books. This is the only system I recommend, the Paleo Burn System for diet, exercise, mindset, the whole picture. Okay, moving right on, gratitude. You have so much to be grateful for that you don't recognize. And I can tell you because I've lost so many of those natural everyday abilities that you do automatically. Things like being able to use your eyes to see, your ears to hear, your voice to speak, being able to swallow, being able to walk. You know, if you live in the United States or in Western society, you've already won the lottery. Here's why. When you look at people in third world countries, they, the richest people there might be living like us, but most people, they don't have all these things. It's so like running water, safe water. They don't have these things in their lives. So take a look around you. Because even someone who's very poor in the U.S. still has more than what people have in other places. And when you're grateful for something, you feel the gratitude with your whole body. I recommend, what I do is I write a list every morning. And that sets my energy for the day because when you're writing a list of things you're grateful for, you have to notice them. Now when you're noticing them, you notice more and more of them. So your energy is already set and your frequency is raised to enjoy more things to be grateful for during your day. And then the very last thing I do at night is I write my gratitude list because then it's setting my brain working on things for which to be grateful while I'm sleeping. If you're watching the news first thing in the morning, you're watching the news last thing at night, or these, I don't know, I don't watch these TV shows. Uh, I think they're murder and violence and things like that. What do you think you're doing to your brain? What do you think you're setting yourself up for at night? Your body needs sleep. Your body needs rest. And oops, I forgot to include that in my seven points. Sleep is probably one of the most important things you need. But you can read about that in my books. So, you do your gratitude list twice a day. Now, you want to create the habit of happiness. Because when you're happy, no matter what goes on in your life, and everybody has bad things going on in their life. Somebody you care about gets sick or hurt, or maybe it's you. Somebody loses a job or moves away. Somebody you love dies. These things happen in everybody's life. And how you handle it depends on the degree of happiness that's your normal lifestyle. Because true happiness isn't events. It's not even a series of events. True happiness is your lifestyle. And you can learn all about how to create that habit of happiness at thehappyshare-movement.com. Watch the video there. It'll tell you why 
you want to create the habit of happiness, it will tell you how to create the habit of happiness. Let's go to happysharemovement.com and share, share all this information, and in particular that one, because it allows you to attract people who live in happiness. And the more happiness that surrounds you, the higher your frequency, the higher their frequency, life just keeps getting better and better. And lastly, how can you be instantly happy? You ever notice a day when it seems like everything's going wrong? Oh, I just went through a whole week of that, formatting my last book. My computer wasn't working right, and it kept losing my book. And I kept having to rewrite significant parts of it. I discovered why the universe always works perfectly, and the finished product is way better than the book that I kept losing. <laughs> anyway, the point is, I knew not to get upset, because believe me, I got upset when I noticed I lost four hours of writing, but I realized it didn't serve me to stay there. So what I did is what I do. First thing you do is right there, Oh, there are so many people who tell me, but I want to be angry. It hurt my feelings. And that serves you how? He did something awful to you. She misled me. She lied about me. And you're being angry about them or you're feeling hurt. It hurts them? Do they know that you're hurt? Do they even care that you're hurt? Does it bother them? No. Does it bother you? Does it impact your emotions? Does it drive your frequency down? Does it hurt you physically with stress? Yes. It doesn't serve you to be hurt or angry or frustrated. Instead, what you can do is say, I'm choosing to feel happy now. These are the words to use. I am choosing to feel happy now. Say that over and over again for at least 10 seconds. Wow. You're going in your, your mama. You're going back into your memory. I usually don't tell you to go into your memory, but here's what you really want to. Find an experience where you were really, really happy, really felt good, had a smile on your face. And while you're saying, I'm choosing to feel happy now, picture yourself reliving that moment, because guess what will happen? Same chemistry will run through your body. And you will change a crummy I got out of the wrong side of the bed day. You will change a, he hurt me, to, oh, I'm okay now. I'm so glad that you came by, do all of these things. And normally I'd say change just one thing a day. And that'll work. But do all of these things. I do them every day. I wouldn't continue to heal. And trust me. I might not even be here if I didn't do all of these things. Gail O'Malley Bierman, the queen of overcoming, assisting you and causing your smiles to blossom.